The Big Lair Show on the surface is a show that some may simply chalk up to being a stoner animation that contains crass humor and excess drug use. What are you talking to me? And although that does play a role within the show, there is so much more to The Big Lair Show than meets the eye. And in today's video, I will take you through the complete iceberg of the series, starting off with the facts that most people who watch the show would probably know, and ending with conspiracies that only the most diehard fans of the show could possibly even think of. Like, say, someone who has a Sassy the Sasquatch tattoo on their left rib. Oh, what are you talking to me? So, let's get into the iceberg. Starting off at the very top of the iceberg, we have one of my personal favourite little quirks of the first season, being that in every episode, you can see the original username that Jared Wright, the creator of The Big Les Show, had for his YouTube channel. And honestly, I can see why he scraps it after the end of season 1, as The Big Les Show has a much better ring to it as a channel name than Guitar Fingers 2112. Next up, we have the hidden tumors, which were placed in the background of season 1 episodes as a means of foreshadowing the events to come. And when the series first released, people were naturally a bit confused at what was going on. However, nowadays it's become a fun game within the Big Les Show community to go back and point out all of the hidden tumor easter eggs within season 1. It's probably one of them gallo things that you've been seeing around here. Mm, probably was. Yeah, right, Liz. They're not real. They are real. If you've watched The Big Les Show, you'll most likely know that Jared Wright created the show almost entirely by himself on Microsoft Paint. However, what you may not be aware of is the fact that for the first two seasons of The Big Les Show, Jared made the entirety of the show on his tiny laptop that was given out to him by the Australian government. And honestly, that's a seriously impressive feat, even if the quality of the first two seasons doesn't quite hold up to the rest of the show. And speaking of Jared Wright, the legend himself only ever officially appears in one episode of the Big Les Show series, which comes in Season 2, Episode 4, Birthday Bash, where Jared serves on the jury that convicts Les of aggravated assault, oh, and of course, killing those innocent puppies. Mm-hmm. Take that sick f away. So, now that we've covered the tip of the iceberg, it's time to venture beneath the surface. The initials of the show's creators, JW for Jared Wright and TH for Tom Hollis, can be seen in many of the backgrounds within The Big Les Show, and can even be witnessed in Les's hat in Tuma Island 2, as well as the joint that Les rolls up at the start of Season 4. And honestly, this is just a fun thing to look for throughout The Big Les Show series, as there's so many examples of the creators' initials being hidden throughout the show. When Les is serving his prison sentence in Season 2, the numbers on Les's prison clothes are actually linked to Jared Wright's real-life birthday, which is on the 16th of August, 1994. And honestly, this one is really hard to find unless you follow Jared on Instagram, since there's practically no public information on his birthday apart from people wishing him happy birthday during the middle of August on Instagram. So, needless to say, this is a pretty hard one to find. Oh yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah. One of the Big Les Show's most infamous episodes, Popcoin, is based on Jared's real-life experience of working as an overnight janitor at a cinema with his friend Tom, where they would often hoover up coins as well as little pieces of popcorn, and thus where the phrase Popcoin comes from. Say pop. Pop. Now say corn. Corn. Now say pop. Corn. Popcoin. Ah. Oh. Many people who have watched The Big Les Show will know that the Tumors are actually just messed up Homer Simpsons. However, the origins of the main character Les are far less talked about. You see, Les is actually based off of the father of one of Jared's friends at school, who displayed much of the same alpha dominance when breaking up one of his son's fights as Les does throughout the series. However, the reason that we never see the true identity of Les revealed is that Jared never wanted his characters to offend people that he knew in real life. So he chose to keep the origins of Les anonymous forever. Mm. Dominance. Dominance of the house. 
The TV show Lost has played an incredibly significant role in shaping the creative mind of Jared Wright. And thus, Jared has left a myriad of references to the Lost series throughout the Big Lies show, such as the Lost DVD in the back of Sassy's car, the Rip plane scene in Chuma Island, and even Clarence telling Les that they have to go back to Chuma Island is a reference to when Katie tells Jack that they need to go back to the island in Lost. And this is just some of the many, many Lost references throughout the Big Lies show. We have to go back, Kate. And Lost isn't the only series that Jared references throughout the Big Les Show, as the Gatorade bong used in Season 4, Episode 2 to send the boys into a different dimension is actually a reference to the port key in Harry Potter, which is used to transport anyone holding it to wherever they choose. That isn't just any man key boot, mate. It's a port key. Time to go! What's a port key? Ah! And this is taken a step further in the show, as the boys use the Gatorade bong to explore their innermost desires. Or oh, M, the universe. <laughs> well, the first letter of universe is you, Mark. <laughs> okay, so this one technically isn't from the original Big Lies Show series, but in episode 4 of the Mike Nolan Show, a prequel to The Big Les Show, when we go inside Donnie's shop, we can actually see posters for Season 1 of The Big Les Show, as well as the first Chuma Island, which confirms the fact that everyone within Brown Town knows that they're on a show apart from Les, as the entire town is preparing for the arrival of Season 1, and is even selling merchandise to profit off of this phenomenon. At the end of Chuma Island 3, the person who gives Sassy a lift in the real world is actually Jared's real life brother, who was in real life late to a personal training session as a result of helping Jared film this scene. And this is why Jared apologizes to his brother in character as Sassy at the end of the car scene. Ah, no worries, mate. Sorry, your life for work and everything. <laughs> Speaking of Chuma Island 3, when Les gets shot by his father, his bullet holes form the shape of the Southern Cross on the Australian flag, which in my view is a perfect way to round out the series as it gives Les the ultimate Australian send-off. That's a beautiful mate. The Sassmate grills which are used by Sassy throughout the Big Les Show are inspired by the Gasmate grills, which were notorious for exploding on people and in return, leading to a lot of lawsuits. And of course, in true Big Les style, the Sassmates are constantly used to explode things, such as at the end of Chuma Island 2, when Clarence drops to the bottom of the island and blows up all of the Chumas using Sassy's Sassmate grill, and in turn, saving the Big Les universe from complete and utter collapse. My lord, please save this, Sahoos. Oh, this guy's. And so, finally, right at the bottom of the iceberg, we have the case of Taipan Pete. And now I know what you're thinking wasn't Taipan Pete a figment of Les's imagination? Well, yes. Yes, he was, but he was also identified by Sassy, Donnie, Wayno, and Mike Nolan, which I believe cancels out the theory that Quentin is Taipan Pete, as why would Quentin bother interacting with Mike Nolan and the rest of the Sasquatches if his ultimate message is only for Les? And another thing that leads me to believe that this theory is true is that Taipan is a type of Australian snake which was named after an Aboriginal word for the rainbow snake, which itself is an ancestral creator god in Aboriginal mythology. And as Jared is the creator of the Big Les universe, Jared is the Taipan. And to further add to this theory, Jared stated in an interview on the Your Mate Tom channel that Chuma Island 3 was essentially saying goodbye to his adolescent self. So, it would make a lot of sense for Jared to be Taipan Pete, as Jared has been drawing Les since high school. And so, when Pete tells Les that he knows him from when he was younger, he's technically telling the truth, as Jared has practically known Les for his entire life. Furthermore, when Taipan Pete tells Les that he has to die in order for things to be okay, in my view, it's actually an allegory for Jared having to move on from his adolescent life, in order to progress into his adult one. And in my opinion, this also serves as a means to say that Les has to die so that Jared can continue making stories about all of the other magnificent characters in Burntown, which we've already seen since the end of Truma Island 3 with Mike Nolan's Long Weekend and the Sassy the Sasquatch show. 
and of course, the many, many more stories that are yet to come. Meaning that Les truly had to die, and that Taipan P is Jared giving him that warning. And with that, the Big Les Show iceberg is complete. So, please let me know what you think of the Taipan Pete theory in the comments below, and also let me know if I missed anything throughout this iceberg. And as always, a massive thank you goes out to Jared Wright for making such an incredible show in the first place. And with all of that said, stay safe, stay happy, stay Taipan.